Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's good to have you guys here today. Um, I was literally thinking that, you know, as the snow was coming down, and you were, you know, we were uh, preparing to have, I think they said it was like, you know, at some point, like two to four feet of snow uh, this coming weekend. Um, I was half expecting to, uh, you know, literally, or to, you know, not have anybody here today, and, you know, I'd literally be preaching to the choir uh, with just Pastor uh, Gary and Carrie. So, um, so I'm glad, you know, some, some people are here uh, today. Um, uh, let's see here, I'm trying to... <laughs> um, so, uh, it's good to have you, all of you guys here on uh, the live stream as well, whether you're joining us here live or whether you're joining us here uh, later as either this is going out in podcast or if you're joining us on one of our many, uh, you know, live streaming platforms. It's great to have you guys here. Uh, great to see you guys here for face-to-face -face sometime. I'm usually in the back, uh, you know, behind the monitor, so... Um, so today uh, we are talking a little bit about uh, what it means to be an influencer. And this is a topic that, you know, we talk a little bit about uh, with our students as, you know, a lot of them are, in, or, you know, influenced by, you know, TikTok stars or YouTubers or, uh, you know, Instagram models or, you know, other people like that. And we, t we talk a little bit about what it means to, you know, be a person, be a child of God. And so um, when we are... Um, uh, let's see here. Let's just jump back here. So, um, so, uh, so the question that you know is most important when we're trying to figure out you know how do we influence people, how do we uh, become uh, an influencer, how do we you know make a difference in the world is we start asking what is it or what is interesting to you. Um, you know, so what do I have to offer the world? Do I want to be able to give to our church? Do I want to, do I want to be able to, you know, help give and raise money for, you know, causes that I care about around the world? Do I want to be able to participate, you know, in different school events? Or do I want to participate in, you know, uh, you know pushing for, you know, projects and, you know, pro or work projects? And uh, do I want to be able to make a change? Do I want to see what, you know, my life can do or what I can do through my life and what, how much of a difference I can make in the world? Or, you know, do I just want to be able to prove something to, you know, the people in my life that, you know, maybe I have value instead of, you know, just, you know, being that kid who, or, you know, that student who hides in the corner or uh, just kind of does what, or just kind of goes off on their own and does whatever. So, but... Ultimately, you know, it's like we, not only do we need to know what we have to offer, we also need to know who we are. We can't influence people until we know who we are. Um, and we can start asking questions like, you know, what have, what have I achieved that I can tell me, you know, who I am? Am I the captain of the baseball team? Am I the firstborn son? You know, did, am I the highest selling salesman at my job? Uh, do I have, you know, lots of followers online? Am I a straight A student? Do I, you know, do really good work? Um, am I capable of uh, putting together, you know, great projects? And you know, am I master craftsman and machinist? Um, and uh, sometimes the question, you know, instead of just uh, asking, you know, who I am or, or like who I am. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Carrie, Ooh, I've got control of the uh, presentation back here, so we can just leave that as is. Um, Yep, so yeah, just, just be careful with the mouse back there. Um, so uh, sometimes, you know, the question is, you know, how am I defined by what others say about me? And this is a tricky one because a lot of times, you know, we think it's like, you know, there's a lot of different crazy tensions that we can have when, you know, we might feel one way, but, you know, people are telling us another thing. Um, and uh, we're trying to, and a lot of our students are still trying to discover who they are. Uh, we start by discovering uh, ourselves by control of the things that we have done and the things that we have done right, um, or the things that we have done right or the things we have done wrong. And as we look at this, uh, let's take it a step further, because it's not just about who you are, it's about whose you are. See, it, it's not just about who you are, but it's about whose you are. You see, we often tie our identity to the things that, you know, we do or, you know, the things that we say. And so, you know, like me growing up and even now a little bit, I used to be the tech nerd. I used to be the guy who, you know, knew what all the buttons do on the, you know, the controllers in the back. Um, and I spent a lot more time uh, in youth group, you know, behind the board than I was, you know, interacting with people or, um, 
you know, trying to, you know, influence or, you know, become somebody that, you know, God has called me to be. And I kind of got focused and I got bogged down. And, you know, I took pride in, you know, my ability to, you know, know things, take things apart, figure out how things work. And there's nothing wrong with being good at what you do or striving to be great at something. In fact, God has called us to, you know, be great. But it's when those things that are take the place of the one who created all things is that when, or is that, that's when we start to be, lose who we are when the uh, when the creator replaces the cre- or when the created replaces the creator that's when we lose who we are and see here's why this matters how you identify yourself determines how you approach life if my whole identity is wrapped up in trying to get more in, or do more or be more or if I'm always trying I'm always going to come up short why because more is never enough and so instead of trying to decide my, or describe myself by the labels uh, that I've been given, I'm going to choose to define myself by the way, or by myself, or define myself by, based on whose I am. Not just people, not just what people say I am. My goal isn't to do or have more. My goal is to live a life that matters in, a light of who, in the light of whose I am. My goal is to live a life that honors God and serves others. And so if that's the goal, how do we accomplish it? Well, it's you know, rather simple. I mean, at least that's what you tell the students. I uh, break it down into three steps. You tell them that we seek, we dwell, and tw- tell. And I totally typed the wrong one. Uh, <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's on me. But, uh, so the first one that we, or that we talk about is seek. What, uh, what do we, how do we seek God? In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. What God is saying here is that he no longer, or you no longer have to go all, or excuse me, what God is saying here is that you have to go all in on this. Seeking God isn't something that we just dip our toes into. Uh, Truly seeking God requires all of who we are. It requires us to go all in. Many of how you, or many of you may have heard, or so, how many of you guys have heard of Chance the Rapper? Um, it's uh, not necessarily a Christian artist. He's not a Christian artist or anything like that. Um, but, you know, he grew up in the church, uh, was raised uh, to know God by a, uh, a, a Christian father or grandfather um, when he was young. And like many people that you guys may know or, you know, have even heard of in the church, uh, he, as he grew older, he grew away from God. Um, And it wasn't until 2016 when he had a daughter who was born with a heart defect uh, that caused him to reevaluate his life and turn back to God. And just a few years ago, uh, he said something that was really interesting. So uh, he posted to his uh, Instagram, I'm on a plane headed out of the country on my first sabbatical. I'm going away to learn the word of God, which I'm admittedly very unfamiliar with. I've been brought up by my family to know Christ, but I have taken it upon myself to take a couple days and read my Bible. We all quote scripture and tell each other what God likes and doesn't like, but how much time do we spend as followers of Jesus to really just read and know his word? I'm definitely guilty of not devoting time to it. See, despite all of the amazing labels that, you know, you know, we as a culture may have put on a man like Chance the Rapper, deep down Chance knew that, every, or that all of those ever-changing subjective labels were not big enough to truly answer the question of who he is. Um, he knew that he had to seek God, the one who made him for his true identity. And I'm not saying that we have to necessarily, you know, stop our whole lives and, in order to seek God. We don't have to devote, we don't have to, you know, uh, become like the monks who live in the mountains that all they do is, you know, read the word and speak or pray with God. Um, But all I'm saying is that we do need to be able to seek him and we have to make him our first priority. And to seek him is to know him. And that is the true goal. See, chance was the best way to know, or chance showed us probably the best way to know who he is was to learn who he is, or whose he is. What we can learn from his example is one of the best ways to learn uh, whose we are and who we are and who we are is to seek God through his word. So first, we seek God. Second, 
we dwell. There we go. That one I got correct. So, um, one of the questions we mentioned earlier: Am I defined by others, or am I, or am I defined by what others say about me? When people hear my name, what do they think of me? See, think of it this way: If I were to give you uh, give you a name tag, and given the given you the objective of you know handing that name tag to some totally random person, and write down th on that you know, three words or a handful of words that describe you, what would that say? And, you know, a lot of, a lot of our students would kind of freak out because it's like, you know, I don't know who this person is. I, I don't know if they don't know me. How, I can't, you know, define who I am. And it's, it can be kind of scary when you, you know, put yourself out there and try to figure out how people view you. And so instead of, you know, asking people what do they think about me? Uh, think, er, so what if we instead asked, or stop asking what others think about us and start asking ourselves with a community, or start surrounding ourselves with a community that reflects who we want to become? See, the idea will help us, or that idea will help us be reminded that we are, that who we are isn't based on what other people say about us, but it's based on whose we are. And the beautiful thing is we're not created to live alone. See, yes, relationships and friendships can be messy, but they are absolutely worth it. See, check, check out uh, what this proverb says about the importance of surrounding yourselves with the right people. Proverbs 13.20 says, Become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. In fact, that's why the church is being part of a small group and being part of the church and being plugged in with other believers is so important. We want this to be a safe place where you guys can grow, where you can have relationships with people who are growing in the relationship with Jesus just like you guys are. And so what if Chance the Rapper uh, hung out with only people who didn't believe in his dreams? What if he never separated themselves from the people who, and circumstances who gave him those first labels like disappointment um, and instead surrounded, or, and said he surrounded himself um, and and we should surround ourselves with people who push you to be better Christians uh, and push you to be better uh, children of God. So first we seek, uh, second we dwell, and finally we tell. See, the last thing you have to do is tell your story. Uh, the labels that the world gives you uh, will tell one story. Disappointment. You're a nobody. You're only as good as your last performance. But the labels that God gives you tell a greater story, the story of what, of what he is doing in our lives. You speak, speaking of labels, this has always been an issue, even in the church. See, a long time ago, the world was waiting for a savior to show up. Specifically, two guys named Philip and Nathaniel were waiting for him. They needed a reason to hope, a God to trust, uh, a hero to heal their external and especially their internal uh, imperfections. And one day, that savior that they'd been waiting for showed up. John was one of Jesus' closest followers, uh, and he wrote about it in uh, this interaction in John 1, 45 and 46. It says, Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God. And Nathanael asked, Nazareth? Can any good thing come from there? Do you see that label right there that Nathaniel gave Jesus? From Nazareth. No one has a place that can't produce any good thing. Literally, Jesus' hometown was an insult to him, or was an insult. Um, how many of you have ever been ashamed by, uh, ashamed because of where you came from? Whether that's the area that you grew up in or the family you came from? See, you're not alone. People did the same thing to Jesus. What I love about Jesus, though, is that he t knew his identity didn't come from where he grew up. His identity came from his heavenly Father. The same is true for us. Where Jesus came from was a part of his story. Where you come from is a part of your story. It has shaped who you are today, and hopefully it reminds you of whose you are today. And in order for us to know who we are, we need to know whose we are. And we can discover that by seeking after God, dwelling in a good community, and telling others about our story. And so now that we've kind of covered the basics of dwell, uh, 
uh, or she, yeah, uh, and tell uh, we, let's jump back to the, one of the questions that we asked at the top. What do I have to offer? What do I have to offer? What am I here for? See, uh, these are great questions that we can all ask in pursuit of truth. Uh, Sam Roberts is a leader in another church that uh, we visited recently, and he, ha he put it in a great way. Uh, you are less important than you think you are, but you are way more important than you think you are. You are less important than you think you are, but you are way more important than you think you are. What does that mean? See, when I was growing up, uh, I was really plugged into, you know, the high school band. I, uh, you know, played quite a few, tr or quite a few instruments. I started out with trumpet, and you know, we did a, I did a, you know, poured myself into that for, you know, about five years. Kind of got bored a little bit in high school. Joined uh, percussion, you know, learned to do the marimba, and I played a little bit of piano growing up as well. My mom will, you know, t remind me of that. And but I always found it difficult to, you know, keep track of all 10 of my fingers. And so instead, I, you know, decided to kind of dumb it down a little bit. I played marimba, which is, you know, similar to a panel or piano, but you only have four mallets at most. And so you just, you have less to think about and less to kind of move around the keyboard. And, you know, I poured myself into it and, uh, you know, tried my best to, you know, become better at, you know, what I did. And so that also led to me being plugged into part of, you know, the high school's, um, our, our youth group's uh, worship team as well, and I poured myself into that, uh, tried my best to, you know, do better, learn better, or learn more, um, and, you know, become the best that I could be. Um, and after high school, I thought, you know, oh, man, I'm such a great worship band, or, like, worship drummer. It's like, you know what, it's like nobody needs to be better than me. It's like, you know, I can go pretty much wherever I need to, and, you know, it's like, I'll, I'll, have, a, I'll have a spot on, you know, what, whatever I'm doing. And so, when I got, or after high school, I went to Heartland Master's Commission in, um, uh, down in Cold Spring, Minnesota. Shout out to Dylan Patterson, uh, director down there. Uh, it's a gr still a great you know, discipleship program if you guys are interested in uh, you know, looking for something to do after high school. But um, when I was there, I uh, tried out for the worship team you know, probably during the first week I was there. And uh, it was pretty pretty intense and you know I did you know some tryouts in high school for the band and you know it's it's always one thing to be able to you know take your trumpets into you know the small room with a with a band director just you know go through your scales uh, make sure you know what you're doing and you know play a little piece and you know it's it's, it's you know not too bad when you've got you know well-lit room and you know that you expect the director just to get you know just kind of sit there quietly and you know take notes and not really do much but uh, when I got to Heartland Masters Commission and tried out for the worship team there, that was, that was a whole other ball game. Um, because, you know, they had, or in the youth building down there, they have a raised auditorium seating. Uh, you know, it was a completely blacked out environment, had some, you know, minimal house lighting. And so, you know, when you step up on stage with all these, you know, bright stage lights shining down on you, and uh, the people who are, you know, judging you are just kind of, you know, up, above you, looking down in the dark, not really saying anything. And so it's like, just you know, go through my set, you know, play a couple of you know, songs on the drums. I tried the piano again, didn't work out too well for that. I wasn't too confident on that one, but you know, I thought I had it with the drums. And then your silence when you're done. It's like, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, We'll, we'll uh, let you know. That was, that was a bit of an ego check right there. Because at that moment, I realized that I was far less important than I thought I was. You see, and then there are moments when you realize that you are way more important than you think you are. After college and after you know, going through uh, my time at North Central, I went off and uh, went back home and started working at a daycare, and I worked through there through high school. But uh, when you're when you're an adult, you get you know some more adult responsibilities, and so uh, I got the I got the morning shift uh, working there at the daycare, and so had to be up at you know up and at uh, work at 6 a.m. Uh, to open up uh, for the kids who'd start showing up at 6:30, and you know it was most of and most of the kids I worked with, you know, were in in the you know preschool age, and they were you know great to hang out with, great to work with, and it's always fun to be able to you know pour into somebody who is 
um, you know, still developing and still learning. And um, most of the kids at that time, you know, were you know still pretty sleepy. We'd serve breakfast, you know, just nothing crazy, just you know, like a bowl of cereal and some milk. Um, and you know, most of them, you know, when they're sitting there, would just kind of just kind of put their hand on their head and you know almost you know fall asleep in their Cheerios every once in a while. But uh, one kid that you know showed up uh, occasionally in the mornings. Uh, really kind of stuck out to me because uh, he would always be just like the other ones where he was like super sleepy, kind of drugging along, you know, wishing that, you know, he could still be in bed with his, you know, with his blanket and his teddy bear. Um, but the second that he saw me, the door opened, his light, or his eyes would just light up. He'd run towards me and, you know, just give me like one of the biggest hugs, uh, at least as far up as he could reach. Um, and it was just, an absolute night and day change in you know this kid's behavior demeanor just because like just because I was able to pour into his life and so and it was like in those moments when you realize that you are way more important than I thought I was um, and coming out of high school I was pretty good at the seeking part of our you know seek dwell tell um, my parents did a great job of you know uh, instilling in me uh, in, instilling me in me the importance of a prayer life, uh, seeking after God, and you know, uh, having a devotion life. But it wasn't until I got to college when I realized the importance of a godly community. Um, when, when your pride gets checked like that, like I did during the worship team tryouts, it, you know, really, you know, makes sure, or it really checks your pride and makes you, you know, seek after people, or seek after a people, seek after a community. And one of the really good examples of you know, people being influence, or influencers in a community uh, is an example of Trader Joe's. Um, see, Trader Joe's, it started out as a you know, little market called Pronto Market. And it was you know, a market built around the idea of efficiency. Um, it was you know, designed to get people into and out of the store as fast as possible. And you know, if that was you know, me you know, when I was in high school, that would have been great because I could have just you know, literally walked in and you know, walked out without really talking to much people. Now we've got the internet and you can have pretty much anything sent to you nowadays. But um, Pronto Markets was probably like one of the first uh, where it was built to get people you know, back on the road, back where they needed to go. Um, and there was another, or there was a man who came around uh, named Jum, or Joe Colombe, uh, and he came around and he saw that there was a need in the world and a need in the marketplace. And he said, people don't want efficiency, they want relationships. And so he bought up Pronto Market and he turned it into the vision of what he viewed uh, he, uh, his community needed. Um, and so now they don't just, you know, work to build relationships through, you know, grocery stores and, and their relationship with communities, but they also uh, meet needs in the world. And in 2021, they donated about $350 million worth of food, uh, you know, to people in their community and people around the world. And if a grocery store can make that much of a difference in the world, how much more can a bunch of students or a church, even here in Cross Lake, uh, Minnesota, make in the world? See, we have something to offer, or we have something to offer our community. We have something to offer the people in our lives. And when we know who we are, we know what we have to offer. When we know whose we are, we know what we have or what we can offer. See, when our identity gets tied up in the things of that what we do and the things that other people say, we get limited. We get boxed in. We get pressured into an identity that we were never made to be. Uh, we get unreasonable expectations set upon us that we don't know how to meet, we don't know how to strive under. Um, and the world had unreasonable expectations of who Jesus was supposed to be. They had an idea of what the Messiah was supposed to look like. They thought they knew where he would come from. Um, and like we read in you know, John chapter 1, verse 45, we'll go ahead and read through that again. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, about whom the prophet, prophets also wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of, uh, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. And see, here's where it gets good, because Philip replies, come and see for yourself. Come and see 
for yourself. Almost like he was challenging Nathaniel. Uh, Come and see what God can do through you. See, last time I checked, God said that you are loved. God said that you are equipped. God said that you are called to a purpose and that he's given you experiences no one else has. He has given you strengths that are ready to be flexed because the truth is on our own, we are less important than we think we are. But with God, you are way more important than you think you are. Um, Jesus said this in Luke chapter 9. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up on your own way, or give up your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. It's when we give up on our own life that is when we find our true purpose. When we try to do things on our own, we separate ourselves from the true purpose that God created us for. And see, it's, it's great to be able to share with you guys here today. Um, you know, growing up, grew up as the introverted kid, uh, you know, liked my alone time. And a lot of times I wondered, it's like, is there anything good that can come out of Austin? Uh, is there anything that I can offer the world, that I can offer uh, the people of my community? Or am I just, you know, going to be kind of on my own, uh, fiddling with, you know, electronics and, you know, learning how to do stuff without actually making any real commitment or contribution to the world? And how can God use someone like me, someone who doesn't really like, you know, or, you know, get a whole lot of excitement or get a whole lot of energy of being around people? But then what I realized is that I just have to put one foot in front of the other and choose to be obedient to God today. He says that your word, or God's word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I don't need to know where I'm going or in the future for God to take, or for God to take me there. All I need to do is be obedient today and step into what God has called me. In my case, you know, God healed my pain that I had been carrying um, and that kept me from, or, and or the pain that had been keeping me from stepping into community, stepping into a new passion for students, and to see a generation rise up and change the world and spark revival in this world. Uh, Because I had learned to seek after God, but it wasn't until I began to dwell in community and with er, with other believers that I began to find the confidence to step into what God created me to be. And I could tell others about the journey that God had brought me down and the plans that he had created just for, uh, just for me and just for you. So uh, let's go ahead and pray. So uh, dear God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that uh, even through all of this you know, crazy weather, through the storm, through the snow, uh, that we're able to come together uh, either online or here in person uh, to learn more about you. God, we pray that uh, you would speak to us, that you would pour into our lives, that we... Um, God, we want to take the time to dedicate, you know, dedicate some time to you, put you first, um, and help us to, you know, seek after you with all your, with all of our hearts. And through that, God, we pray that you would speak to us, uh, speak to us through uh, the community that we have built up here at Cross Lake Christian. Speak to us uh, through the people that you have put into our lives. Um, help, help us, you know, build up our fellow, uh, fellow Christians, fellow believers here in the church our community, uh, at our workplace. Help them to, you know, pour into us as we pour into them. And God, help us to use that to make a difference in other people's lives as we tell them about the miraculous story that you have given us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.